Hi, it's Steve here, Heavenly Sign, 2017.com. Up until 1967, global standard time was actually calculated astronomically from the rotation of the Earth on its axis. This was an extremely accurate method, but not precise due to various anomalies, including Earth's elliptical orbit and the fact that the Earth's rotation is gradually slowing. In modern times, the need for a precisely synchronized time has important applications in navigation. Satellite-based global positioning and navigation systems, they share one common clock frequency and one common highly synchronized system time. In the quest for the uh, necessary precision, timekeeping actually passed from the domain of astronomers to physicists. Now the, the second, which had previously been described as one eighty-six thousand four hundredth of a mean solar day, was from October 1967 more accurately described as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. More simply, it is based on the frequency of light emitted by cesium-133 when exposed to microwave radiation, as explained in the following video from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Now, NIST's new atomic time interval standard, the NIST F2, combines laser cooling with a liquid nitrogen cool chamber to achieve unprecedented accuracy in a cesium fountain clock. The improved clock will not gain or lose one second in 300 million years. So the animation that you just watched illustrates how cesium atomic fountain clocks work in general and features the improvements made to the NIST F2. By measuring this frequency, the value of 9,192,631,770 per second has been assigned. The new NIST F2 atomic clock is accurate to within one second in 300 million years. So let's look at this number. 9 billion 192,631,770. The number has 144 divisors. Now divisors are a number by which another number is to be divided or or it's a number that divides into another number without a remainder. 
God created the earth in six days or 144 hours. There are 1,440 minutes in a day. A close approximation of the frequency of cesium-133 can be obtained from a calculation using the prophesied time assigned to the earth and the speed of light in a vacuum. This equates to the number of oscillations of a cesium-133 atom in one second, which is to an accuracy of 99.994%. Now if we subtract the difference, this is what we get. Now the Tetragrammaton for Jehovah has a gematria value of 26. Now, but for, let me say something about Jehovah, okay? The name Jehovah is actually a Latinization of the Hebrew word Yahweh. So to keep our atomic clocks from running too far ahead of time as determined by the Earth's rotation, every year or two, the captains of global timekeeping add a second to atomic time before broadcasting this new time, adjusted time, out to the world as universal coordinated time. The adjustment's unassuming little name is the leap second, and 10 of them were tacked on to UTC all at once in 1972, and another 25 have been added since. Uh, number 26 was actually tacked on in June of 2015, just before midnight. Particle physicists describe the certainty of a result on a scale that goes up to five sigma. One sigma could be a random statistical fluctuation in the data. Three sigma counts as evidence, but only a full five sigma result is a discovery. So by definition, the probability that a five sigma result is wrong is less than one in a million. So. According to this scale, the above calculation represents absolute proof of the absolute existence of the eternal God in the absolute measurement of time itself. So, all of you atheists out there who love to flaunt science to disprove the existence of God, you can now just, well, go play Xbox or something and leave the real science to, well, science. This is Steve. And until next time, thanks for watching.